This is a course from a trial that I just got back from in Canada. I go up here quite often to trial. And this is a new event or a tournament that they had gotten approved for by UKI. It's called an International Challenge Event, or ICE for short. It is a new thing that they're bringing in to bring more international type courses or style of courses into the United States. And they have 13 of these in the United States or North America rather um, this year. And PhD was one that was approved. Our course designer was Daniel Walls. He is an FCI judge from over in Europe. I think he's from Germany. I am not 100% sure on that, but it's somewhere over in Europe. And we did the rookie version. So there's rookie and international. Rookie is for beginner novice and international is for senior champ handler teams. And we're going to be going over the jumping course here. So you can see that I have it laid out here. We're just going to sort of talk about what it has, where it goes and handling. And then I do have the video of me and Rush running this. We almost made it through it clean. We had a bobble at the weaves. He missed the first entry there because I reared the weaves and then sped up. I didn't let him find the weaves. And then we had a little bit of a bobble here on um, not the last part there um, from 16, the broad jump to 17. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So we have a wrap element to start. So you really didn't need a lead out. And I set rush up right here and I was on his he was, I was on his right side, so he was dog on left. And I just told him to mark forward to turn his head to the jump. And I just took a step or a couple steps after I watched the video to make sure he got that jump. And then a little bit of lateral motion to make sure he got the tunnel. We then go up to three, which I needed to call his name. So he didn't take 11. A couple dogs did go a little long and took 11. So I called his name. I told him to jump, so he went long, and then tunnel. As soon as he was on approach to the tunnel, I told him his weave command, and I wish I had just done a blind cross after the tunnel before the weaves, because I had a lot of time to do it, and that would have, I think, in my mind, prevented him from missing the proper entry, but it was just one refusal, which we had two more to have happen. Um, that would have made us head an E, so we're still good so far. So I threw him back in the weaves, just had a refusal, and then you went to weaves to the tunnel. I really did want to try to layer the jump there, but since this was a little bit of a higher stakes type of course, again, it was a tournament, and I really wanted to try to, to place, I wanted to play a little safe and that's what I did. So I went in on the inside. I think if I did go on the outside, he would have been fine, but I just really didn't want to chance it. Again, that is a very tempting jump, but I think a lot of dogs, even if they uh, lay it or not, their handler, they got that tunnel problem. From there, you had six, and then a distance away, you had a little bit. It's a backside. You'd need a threadle wrap there. It was sort of hard to get a blind cross in between six and seven, especially with my dog Rush. I actually, you'll see in the video that I was sort of behind um, since I had to stay with, I decided to cut up in here. I was a little bit behind, but our throttle wrap cue is one of our strongest things. So our skills. So I just told him to swing, which is my throttle wrap cue. I just dropped my right arm. I put my hands together to tell him that he's going to turn away from me and then carried off with my right hand to tell him that he was turning. From there, we have sort of like the make or break part of the course. You have a really long broken up serpentine with four jumps. So you went eight in on nine to the back side of 10 and then to the back side of 11 back to the tunnel. And then you have an in on 13 and then 14. So after the thread up here, I did do a blind cross and you'll see that I didn't actually complete the cross completely. I just kept staying connected with him. So I kept looking at him over my right shoulder 
and I just got into position to get right here. So I would just had walked sideways and just kept him on my right arm. I did have to cue this jump a little bit because he almost came out of it. So I just cued the jump. All right, I told him to in on nine. I told him to go back on 10, which is Lala for me. I did a blind cross after 10. And then I had dog on left to tell him to zoom, which is my backside wrap cue. That was the fastest way to do this, in my opinion, because your handler line from 7 to 11 is literally just one big straight line. Obviously, it's not that, but it's more like this. It was just a big straight line if your dog knew to send. You could have handled it a little bit differently. You could have done a throttle wrap. Again, with this, this whole weekend, if you did not have a throttle wrap cue, you're pretty much um, at a disadvantage. So we will definitely be working on those in the fall when we go back in the building and work skills in less course running. You could do a serpentine and a serp a dog on left for eight, nine. And then it would be best to change side and do a backside slice here. So you could do a backside here or a threadle wrap again on 11. There was a lot of options there, which made that a tricky part of the course. Again, I chose the threadle wrap 11 because I wanted to make sure I could see him take it block number three. And then also once he took the jump, or sorry, I did do a threadle wrap. I did a backside blind. Um, so I did a backside blind on 10 and then a backside wrap with a front cross on 11 to 12. Once he was committed, I just got out of town. I just told him to tunnel, tunnel. And then I started my blind cross almost when he was in the tunnel. So he knew I was turning. I did call his name. And then I told him to in because I wanted to make sure that he was coming in on me and then turning away from me to get that jump. And then a lot of people layered the weaves. I did not. I wanted to make sure that he got the broad jump. And obviously this jump, I'm not really sure how strong our get out cue is with the weaves in the way, because I've been training a lot of weaves lately. And also I didn't want to layer the weaves too, because if you didn't stay in a straight line, you're actually cueing the dog to come in on 17. And I wanted to make sure that we took the right side of 17. So from 16, 17, 18, which was literally our downfall, which sucks because it was right at the end. We almost made it with just one refusal. So what happened is that I was just trying to keep up with him. I was doing a good job. The angle of this jump in real life is more backside-y. So I did tell him to do my backside slice cue, which is Lala. <coughs> and then I did not have time to do a cross on the other side of 17. So I did not have time to get over here, tell him to backside wrap or backside slice, and then do a blind cross afterwards. Or I really it just, there's no way I could serp, I've served it either. So what happened is that I told him to do his la la, and then I told him left. And before he took the bar, he spun in front of the bar and did a left. Well, that's one more refusal. So now I have two refusals, which were still good. But then I got him dog on right. So I was right here. And Rush was right here. And then before I could tell him to check, which just means take the jump and take it tight, he did another rat, uh, spin in front of the jump, which is now three refusals, which three refusals is an E in UKI, and it was a heartbreaker run, and it just really sucked. But up until that, it was a fantastic effort from both of us. It ran super nicely. He kept all the bars up. He listened. He was such a good boy, and I couldn't be more happy with how this ran. So let me go ahead and find the video, and I will run it for you guys. Right, just... They're all drawings. All right, and here is me and Rush running that course that we just uh, analyzed. So called his name. 
And this is where I just pushed him a little bit too far. I just needed to slow down for just a moment, but that's okay. A refusal, just tossed him back in and then it kept going. You can see here, I got behind. I just told him to swing, kept him on my right side and it worked really well. Blind cross here for the backside, wrap in left as soon as he was committed. Blind cross before he was in the tunnel, caught into the weaves, told him to jump. And then here's where it sort of starts to go to, yeah. So that little mishap there is what caused us to E. And I almost fall over when I go ahead and uh, have him catch. So I plan to work on a rear cross cue. I haven't decided if I'm going to use a word or not yet. I have chosen a word. It's going to be tap. And it just means I just got to decide if I'm going to just use tap or if I'm going to use my right and left or if now right and left is on the flat cues, which he does not really well. So I think it's time that I do have a rear cross cue, which means take the bar and turn into me. Or sorry, away from me rather. So yeah, really fun course and uh, really happy with the result. How would you handle it? What skills do you think that you need to work on to get through this? Because this is 